Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. Today I am going to be playing with this beautiful Kaleidacolor ink pad. We'll talk a little bit more about what makes Kaleidacolor special, but I'm also going to be using my gel plate as well as some different embossing powders. And we are going to essentially take four identical backgrounds and see what they look like with the different colors of embossing powder over the top of them. I want to apologize for the blur. This is a relatively new camera that I'm using and it still is having trouble knowing exactly where to focus. So it does happen a few more times. Um, there was nothing I could do about that without losing footage. So I do apologize and ask that you forgive me, but we're going to go ahead and move on. So this Kaleidacolor ink pad is so unique. I have several. I apologize that this one is so messy and dirty. It's mine. It's from my stash. I've had it over 20 years. Now you can re-ink these individual pads because that's what it's made up of, five individual ink pads. I have never re-inked mine and it's still going strong. Now it may not look like it's going strong because it's taking so many layers to add color to that brayer um, cardstock, but that's just the way brayering works really to a large degree, at least in my experience. But anyway, let me just tell you that it's a wonderful ink pad. You can pull it apart to use those ink pads as individual ink pads because there's a variety of different color combinations. I'm using the autumn leaves, as you can see. And so I can use all five of those ink pads individually. And again, there are re-inkers, but I can also push them together and make one larger ink pad that's a beautiful gradient. And we're all about the gradient. We're all about the ombre. And this is perfect. It's absolutely perfect for some of those unique colors and combinations and, and backgrounds that we're trying to get. Now, again, I'm using the, the autumn leaves. I also have the spectrum. There are pretty much any color combo that you can think of. But if there's a color combo that is not available, you can make your own. They are, there are uninked Kaleidacolor ink pads and you can create your own color palette using re-inkers. It's absolutely amazing. So what we're doing today is taking four individual backgrounds that look identical. You can see they're pretty much identical. And we are going to see how they look using different colors of embossing powder. So my sweet friend and design team partner Allison Haikila told me how well the Kaleidacolor works on the gel on the gel plate and she's absolutely right. I had to take her up on that suggestion and I am not mad about it at all. You can see the beautiful gradient that we're getting and all I'm doing I have my ink pad separated. You see I'm pushing it together just to show you. You have to pull it apart for storage. Now you can't have it closed with the, with the ink pads pushed together. That's part of the the special technology. But I have them separated and I'm just tapping tapping the ink pad down on my gel plate and just kind of moving it around. And then I brayer over it to make sure that it's all nice and spread out, nice and smooth. Those colors are a nice gradient. And now I'm taking my 6x6 background stamp. This one is from Hero Arts. It's the Sweet Honeycomb. It's a couple years old. It has some different open honeycomb shapes and closed honeycomb shapes and even some stars in there. It's really sweet. And then I'm using my Versamark, Versamark ink pad. Now you can use it as a watermark so you get a tone on tone or obviously you can use it as an embossing ink because it stays sticky and that allows the embossing powder to stick to your ink. It, it has a long open time meaning it stays sticky and you have time to work with it. So in this case I have pulled four different backgrounds and they all look the same. However, using the Versamark and the different colors of emboss embossing powder, we're going to come up with four unique individual backgrounds. Because often I talk about how the background is just the background. And that's usually in the context of something kind of going wrong or something we're not happy with and we kind of obsess over it and we got to get it right and those kinds of things. And I say, poo to all that. Set that aside. Put that perfectionist mind frame aside and just allow your art to flow. Allow it to happen. Embrace those what we would call imperfections because again the background though lovely and beautiful and important it is just the background and once it's once it's all put together it's just going to be the background. It sets the stage. It's the base. It's the foundation but it's not the whole thing. 
So anything that we might think is an imperfection, we likely aren't going to see, or we can cover it up in a variety of different ways. And I'm hoping that this shows us that. Again, I'm, I'm using four different colors of embossing powder. I've got the clear, so that will definitely give us that watermark look. And then I've got white. I'll be using black and gold. And then in the end, I'll have some, some still photographs of the tags that I made using these backgrounds. But really, this is just to kind of show us how whatever you put over your background really changes it completely. And you can see just by the powders going down how different they look. And it depends on what you want. It really, there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. There's no card making or embossing powder police. You do you. And you make it beautiful. Or you make it grungy. Or you make it clean and simple. Or you make it shabby chic. Or you make it however your heart desires. And I just encourage you to do that. Look at that. Now that is the clear, obviously. That's the tone on tone. Kind of a watermark look. And that allows the background to shine a little bit more, right? You see all the color gradient. You see those beautiful colors and the tones and the warmth. And now this is the gold one. You'll see, see the shine here in just a second when the light hits it just right. And that changes it all together. And then the black, even more so. That black pops off of those colors beautifully. And then the white, it just tones it all down. They're all the same, but they're all completely different. Tell me if you have a favorite. Tell me if you've ever thought of how your backgrounds might differ, taking the same one and doing them in different color combos like that, essentially. And you could do this with stenciling, or you could do this with stamping and, and not using the, the embossing powder. There are lots of different ways that you can take identical backgrounds and make them completely different. So let me encourage you just to play. Set that perfectionism aside. Just play. Allow your art to happen go with the flow if you can. I know it's hard. I know it can be really hard, but just let it happen. Embrace it. Cover it up if it's something that you just can't stand. That's okay too. <laughs> it's okay. Or cut it off. Use a trim. Use an embellishment. It's all right. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Kaleida color. Have you used it before? Do you have any, any other products like that that I'm just not aware of? Let me know. But guys, go ahead and give this video a like. Go ahead and mm -hmm. subscribe if you're not already a member of my Crafty Tribe. Meet me downstairs in the comments. Let me know what you would like to see. I have a couple viewer recommended videos coming up soon and I'd love to hear from the rest of you. So take care y'all and until next time, this is Nancy the Handy Scandy. Mwah. I'm out.